I wish I knew the right way to treat patients with TP53 mutation. P53 is a really complicated and challenging disease biology, and unfortunately relatively common in older patients and in patients who've had prior chemotherapy or radiation treatments. Therapy-related AML um, has been dropped as a category within the classifications, but we recognize it as a subset of interest. Um, and the reason to drop it is because the outcomes are better predicted by the genetics rather than by the history. Um, but when we see P53 mutation, it, it makes our hearts, you know, our, our hearts kind of sink because we know it's so challenging to treat. Um, it often will relapse despite good therapy. We may see good remission rates to treatment, but high relapse rates, and in general, poor survival. I think in general, the other thing that's hard is that there's been less of a clear role for MRD negativity to predict the long-term outcome of patients with TP53 mutation. So it's harder to say who's responding optimally. We're generally trying to involve novel agents in clinical trials for anybody who has a TP53 mutation to do that from day one, to see whether transplant can improve their outcome, to look at post-transplant maintenance strategies. And there are some interesting drugs that have been developed either that work on how P53 uh, affects a leukemia cell or that work in a way independent of how chemotherapy might in terms of inducing DNA damage. Um, so there are some interesting abstracts being presented at this meeting that are particularly looking at that, such as the data with Migrolumab that were presented earlier today uh, in combination with venetoclaxase acetidine. Um, that's a, a study that specifically is looking at the question of can we improve outcomes for TP53. Um, there are other agents that are being looked at um, in, in, in other settings for that as well at the meeting. Um, but you know, I think we're still learning how best to treat this group because we don't have final answers.